joining us for the first time, welcome. If you are a repeat offender, uh, welcome back. Um, you know, today we are here to talk about the books app. You know, we've been on this um, this theme of of the past few weeks, where we have talked about you know some of the tools for learning. You know, we've talked about um, podcasts. We've talked about the Libby app to download books, and so we're kind of into a learning theme. And so toward that direction, you know, we wanted to spend some time today talking about the books app and identifying some of the things that it can do for you. Before we jump into the books app itself, you know, it's it's amazing when you start to do a little research and you look at what the data, what the scientists are telling us about the benefits of reading. There's countless benefits. I shouldn't say countless, but but more than you can count on a, on a, a couple of handfuls of fingers. Um, it's an important activity, and you know we you know it's it's easy for us to find you know research that'll that'll talk about the benefits for learning and experience. It can help you sleep better. It can help your brain health. It's part of the try new things exercise that is really good for your brain. It's good for reducing stress. But still my favorite piece of data is the fact that those people that read 30 minutes a day tend to live 23 months or roughly two years longer than people who don't read books, right? So we can literally come up and say, well, if you want to live a little bit longer, start reading books. Not a bad way, not a bad way to go. All right, so today uh, we are going to be focusing on the books app and, and our particular focus, you know, we tend to break this down. Um, I, I come into these sessions a lot of times asking the question, what are the three things that somebody needs to know about in this case, the Books app. So there's three things. Number one, uh, yes, we want to help you explore reading books with the Books app. You know, we'll talk about where it comes from, um, and and we'll even talk about some of its competitors and maybe one of the advantages. Um, the second bullet is we are going to spend some time shopping. Yes, we're going to shop for books. But in particular, we want to spend some time shopping for free books. There's nothing better than free. So that it, it really goes to demonstrating that this book reading habit does not have to be expensive, right? We'll show you a couple of sources of free books that you can explore. Um, and then the third point is the Books app actually has some hidden PDF functions. Now, we'll define what a PDF file is when we get to that discussion. But, but essentially, if you get um, a PDF file in an email or if you download something, uh, a PDF document from a website, for example, we'll demonstrate the slides that we use, slides that display on the left-hand side of your screen, we will demonstrate how you can download those slides, happen to be in a PDF format, and you can actually store them and read them in the Books app. It's kind of a handy function. Um, the topics that we are exploring, you know, there is additional information. So if you notice the links.seniortechclub.com slash live nine, that, that link uh, entered into a web browser like Safari or Chrome, uh, that will take you to the page, the web page for this particular session. And from there, you can download the slides and you can access the uh, today, there's three different recipes that you would be able to access in order to get more information. So like we've done in the past, a lot of times what we're going to do in the next 40 minutes or so 
is, is we're going to do a quick demonstration. Hopefully you kind of get the feel for, for the topics. And then if you do need more practice or you would like to retrace some of the steps, you come back to the site. Um, if you come back tomorrow, you'll actually see a recording of this video. But then you can also go into the recipes and the nugget documents from the Senior Tech Club site. All right, now we have a tradition. You know, this is the 10th session that we've done. We're doing this twice a week. Um, this is the 10th time we've done this. I have talked about these rules every time we've, we've done a session like this. Uh, these are very informal. I just want you to pretend like you're sitting around the kitchen table exploring these topics. I cannot hear you. I cannot see you. Right. That happens to be the choice that I've made with this particular platform. But as I keep indicating, that doesn't mean that I don't want to hear from you. Um, you are certainly welcome to chat on the YouTube site. Send me a, a chat message. Um, when you see me looking over here, you're, you're, you're seeing me look at a different screen to see if anybody has done a chat. Um, you, can, um, you can send me a text message through the text note. And when you see me looking down over here, you are uh, actually having me look to see if anybody has sent me a text. And then finally, um, if you have any follow-up questions, you can send me an email, and the email can go directly to questions at seniortechclub.com. Okay? Let's talk about the Books app. All right, so what is the Books app? Well, the Books app is a leading e-book reader that comes on your iPhones and iPads and iPods. It even comes on a Mac computer. Right. So there are a number of popular e-reader, e-book reader programs. Probably the Kindle app or Kindle devices really set the marketplace for e-books. Um, they are certainly a competitor to the books app. Now you might say, well, I thought I thought the Books app had a different name, and it's true. Um, back when the um, the app was first introduced to the marketplace back in 2010, it was at that point it was referred to as the iBooks app. But in uh, with with iOS version 12 back in 2018, they renamed it, and now it's simply called the Apple Books app. It is your platform for reading books. It is also a platform that you can use to shop for books. As I indicated on the slide, you can purchase or download books from the iTunes bookstore. That is the Apple iTunes bookstore. And you do that within the app. You know, you don't have to jump between apps. You can do it directly from the books app. So if you have this intense desire to read uh, one of the books that's on the New York Times bestseller list. Popular book. You're not going to find it for free or at, at the iTunes bookstore, but you will be paying for it. And when you pay for that book, you can do it right within the app. You'll ring the cash register at Apple and, and you know, for 10 to $15 in, in that range, uh, you know, you will then be able to access that book. Okay, so let's start to explore this. We're going to do a little shifting of our screens. Uh, what you're actually looking at on the uh, right-hand side of your screen now is my um, version of the Books app. I'm going to shift around a little bit, clean up the screen. Um, and um, what you're looking at on the slide on the left part of your screen is you are looking at the tabs, the icons that are at the bottom of the screen. So let's do, let's start out by doing a little tour. All right, so now I'm gonna go back. And, and so when you look for the Books app on your device, you're going to look for the Books icon, right? It's usually sitting out on one of your home screens. And so you tap, the Books app, and that launches the app. And now you have your icons along the bottom of the screen. Let's break these out a little bit. Right, number one, on the left-hand side, 
you have a tab for reading now. So if you were to tap on this, uh, this would take you to the current book that you happen to be reading. And, and so you can see that on my screen that there is a book called the Milton Filter of Aging Report. is isn't so much a book, but it, it is, you know, it is a book that I downloaded and am currently reading. So reading now is the book that is essentially currently open. You tap on library and you feel free to do this and explore this as we talk. If you tap on library, this is going to take you to your bookshelf. This is your library of books. These are books that you have either purchased or downloaded. And so it's clearly identified as library. And if you notice here, I can actually scroll down and you can see my total library of books. All right, that's the second item. The third item is the bookstore. We're going to come back to that. The fourth item is audiobooks. This is where you can acquire audiobooks that you would listen to. Now, we're going to do some shopping on audiobooks too. But that is one of the relatively new additions to the Books app is its ability to play audiobooks. Now, let me plant a seed with you. You know, you um, you know, you see this um, this advertising on television these days for the Audible company. They are probably the market leader in audiobooks. Now, Audible happens to be an Amazon company. When you start to think about, well, you know, I'd like to look at listening to audiobooks, you, you, you quickly discover that Audible is pretty expensive. There is a monthly fee that they want you to charge. And you're kind of saying, well, you know, I'd like to try out some audiobooks. I'm going to encourage you to come here because I'm going to show you how you can get to some free books that are available on your um, on your um, iPhone and iPad. Excuse me. the The fifth icon on the bottom of the screen is the search. Now, searching is going to be one of your shopping tools. So, really, you have three shopping tools right on the front part of your books app. You have the bookstore. You have audiobooks and you have search. So that's the breakout of a quick tour of the app. All right, I'd like to start out by going shopping for ebooks. And when you think about going shopping for ebooks, you're going to probably land one of two places. You're either going to go to the bookstore or you're going to hit search, right? And so uh, I am going to propose to you that there is a, I'm going to call it a must-have book that you should have installed in your Books app. And that must-have first book is the iPhone user guide. User guide. Now, all of you who are thinking, yeah, you know, when I cracked open that, that iPhone box, there was no book, there was no guide, there was this tiny, tiny little pamphlet. Sure enough, with a couple of clicks, we can find that iPhone user guide and we can download it and place it right on your iPhone so it would be available for you to read and explore at your heart's content. So if you're not finding something on the Senior Tech Club website, then you can jump into the iPhone user guide to, uh, to look up similar topics. Right? Here's how I'm going to recommend that we look for that. I am going to have you tap on the search icon down on the lower right. So you tap on search, and uh, what we're looking at here are um, a list of recent searches, but then there are also some trending searches. So these are searches coming in from the population at large, right? Well, it so happens, excuse me one second. <laughs> it so happens that um, I have iPhone user guide. That is going to be the recommended search. Excuse me. Right. iPhone user guide is going to be the recommended search. And when I search that, you can notice on my screen 
I have in my library, in your library, and then I also have down at the bookstore. And if I do a tap on see all, remember my search was iPhone user guide, I have a fairly extensive list of books that have been returned. Now, I'd like to talk about some of these in more detail. All right, so from this search result, um, if you can notice on my screen on the right hand side, or you can look at my slide deck, I have a handful of different icons and symbols on the screen, each depicting something different. All right, so the first thing is very consistent with when you go to the Apple App Store looking for an app, anything that reads get is free. So for instance, these iPhone user guides, and by the way, the iPhone user guides from Apple are always going to be free, at least you know, to this point. If it says get, that is the equivalent of free, right? And so if you want to download that book, to your device, you would simply tap get. So like for right here, I, I could tap get on this pages user guide for iPhone, and that would then start to download to my device. Yes, I have to do a, a little bit of confirmation in that process, but we can demonstrate that in a bit. Second thing that you occasionally see is similar to what you see right here, right on my screen where you have a cloud. I give you an example of that on the slide on the left. All right, so now when you have this cloud, that means that you have already acquired this book or you may have purchased it or you have you have already previously acquired it, but the book has been removed, right? Either it's been cycled off because you haven't looked at it or or you might have removed it, right? But in in this particular case, the cloud, the little cloud icon is your indication that you, all you have to do is click on the cloud and it will then drop down onto your book. The next example is read, right? So, so here is an example of read, right? And, and you see read on the left-hand side. Read means that the book is already installed on your device, right? You already have, you've either purchased it or you have downloaded it. And then the final example is where you see a price tag, right? And so this is the iPhone user guide. And now somebody is saying, well, I thought you said the iPhone user guides were free. Yes, the iPhone user guides from Apple. This one happens to be available from another author. So um, the, the author creatively named the book the same as what Apple are very similar to what Apple uh, does in their in their name strategy. But you can see that if you want to purchase this book, you will have to pay $3.99. So now if I go ahead and click on it, yes, it's going to still ask for a confirmation in this process, but um, and 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 it will then use whatever credit card is associated with your Apple ID to make that purchase. Now, just for our discussion uh, process, I am going to go to a book that's already on our device, and I can tap on read, and now that is taking me directly to the book itself. Okay, so in this particular example, what we did was we we spent a little bit of time to um, just show you how to find that iPhone user guide. We're going to do more shopping in just a bit. At this particular point, we are in a book. We are actually looking at the current iPhone user guide. You can get to any of your current books by tapping on Reading Now, right? That'll take you into whatever the current book is, or you can go to your library. Remember, the library is your bookshelf. And you can tap on a book in the library, and then that will retrieve that book. All right, now um, I'd like to talk about some of the basics of reading a book. Um, so I am sitting in the iPhone user guide, 
And I want to draw your attention to the numbers on the slide on the left-hand side. All right, so we're looking at this book, right? This is your iPhone. Um, if you simply want to turn the page in a book, you can either swipe left, you can swipe right, or you can simply tap on the edge of the screen. Let me do it like this. If I just tap here, it'll move the pages. I can flip through a whole bunch of pages quickly, all right? Or if I tap on this side, I am going to turn backwards, right, on that page, right? And you kind of have to be off the print. You can do that with your finger, or you can swipe back and forth. Really easy, right? So turning a page, you know, really straightforward. Number two is when you are reading a book, similar to what you're seeing now on the right-hand side, and let's say you want to access the controls that might take you back to the table of contents or to close the book or to change the font, bookmark a book or, or, or do some searching in the book. What you're gonna do is you're gonna tap right in the center of the page. And when you tap in the center of the page, you notice that I get a number of icons controls across the top. I also get some status information down along the bottom of the page, right? And the way we got to that was by tapping right on the center of the screen. So if I tap right on the center, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to use my finger here in this one, then that will retrieve the controls up at the top. All right, so here are the essential controls. If you press the back arrow, that will put away the book. That'll put the book away, right? And so there we are back at the bookstore where we started from. I'm gonna tap on read. And the good news is, is it'll remember where you left off, right? The second uh, item to talk about is um, the table of contents, right? So up here is your control for the table of contents. And so you can click on that table of contents and here you have it, all right? And so, Sure enough, if there is the books app, and so this is the built in, so you can actually, if you want to revisit some books, Apple Books topics, you can actually come back into this iPhone user guide. Number five on this list is searching. Uh, we're not going to spend too much time with these because you can explore these. You can also go to my online recipe, but you can search within a book. That is one of the key advantages of of an ebook is that you are able to search for words or topics within a book. Number six on the screen is a bookmark in that I can apply a bookmark to this particular page. And then item number seven is the font. And this is where you can change the font. You can make it bigger, you can make it lighter, you can go dark. Uh, you have a number of options right, that you can explore that are really intended to help your reading experience. All right, so once again, the way we got to these controls, if you're sitting here reading this book and now you want to access the controls, just tap right in the middle of the screen and then you'll see the, um, the, the controls show up at the top of the page along with some status information down at the bottom. Okay, I want to go back to shopping. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap right in the center of this book and I'm gonna press the back arrow way up on the upper left and that's gonna close this book. And now I am going to tap down on the bookstore, right? Because we are gonna go shopping. All right, so, so there are a handful of strategies that you can use to, to shop for books. Uh, I'm going to give you a couple of examples, and then I'm going to show you where you can find free books. So if you have tapped on the bookstore, if you're trying this with me, that's great. If you have tapped on the bookstore, you are now looking at, you are basically walking through the aisles of the Apple bookstore. Right? However, you know, you're not going to walk through every row, every aisle of book, every stack of, of, of bookshelves in that what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to tap on browse sections. So I tap on browse sections and now you can take a look at what 
you know, you can you can break it down to specific topics. You know, if you are interested in nonfiction or if you are interested in sports or children's books or comics, right? You have a number of options so that it'll take you to that specific row right within the Apple bookstore. Two that I want to pull out of here in particular. The first one is top charts, right? And so if you tap on top charts, which happens to be the top on the list, what this is going to do is it is going to give you a list or a display of all of the most popular books at the particular point. At this time, you can actually break it down by genre or topic or category, if you will. And so now I'm going to tap on tap on by genre. And, and if I was interested in biographies and memoirs, I could then tap this topic. Um, now I'm going to tap on see all down here just to give me a little better list. And what you are looking at is the list of the biographies, autobiographies, and memoirs. So, for instance, Michelle Obama's Becoming book has been on the bestseller list for, for quite a while. Now, if you look at that, you can clearly see that this book is going to cost $14.99 for you to purchase it. And so, so you would tap on it and you would be confirming the, the payment amount. We can go back and in a similar vein, if you wanted to take a look at books about politics and current events, all right, and you know, we can then see those books. And once again, notice that the vast majority of those books are paid books. But this would be the top of the list. I'm going to keep pressing back to go back to the um, the browse selections screen. I'm just going to go all the way back. So now we're at the top of the bookstore. I'm going to do browse sections once again. So I tap on browse sections up at the top, and I am going to choose the one below top charts, and that's free books. So this is what I promised you, that I would show you how you can find free books. And and so now. We're looking at different categories of free books. And what I am going to do is uh, go all the way down to the top free books. And I'm going to tap on See All. And now what you are looking at is a list of all of the free books. And um, you will notice a couple of things. Number one, there are some, there are some Apple user guides, right? You know, they are pretty popular. Um, you're going to find a number of classics, and I'm going to talk more about classics in just a bit. But aside from that, you know, you're going to be able to scroll through here and find, you're going to find lots of reading materials. Now, something that I do want you to notice, you know, I'm a big fan of using the uh, reviews and other information which is available to you as you make your decisions about shopping. So that if you see the stars, all right, so for instance, we're looking at this Lucky Charm. I don't know what this book is. It, it looks from the cover, it looks to be some kind of a romance novel. We tap on it and we can actually see that this book has had 99 ratings and it's four plus. So it must be a pretty good book, all right, if, if, if that's the type of book that you like. And you would then tap on Get in order to download it. Yes, I'm going to do it. All right, so I'm going to tap on Get, and it is now starting to do the acquisition process. I have Face ID for security, and I just have to do a double click on the side, and we are now installing this book on my iPhone. I promise you I'm not going to keep this one, right? But, but notice that my Get line just turned into Read, and so... How long did that take? That was definitely less than 30 seconds to actually acquire that free book. Later, if I decide I don't want to have it, um, I can easily delete that book. Okay? All right, I'm going to go back to the bookstore once again. And so um, how we got to this point was 
that you can use the bookstore in order to browse sections. And that's how we got to this point right here, browse sections where you can then uh, you know, look at the various categories of books in order to pick out a book that will work for you. Try that out, just spend a few minutes doing some shopping and, and I think you'll be surprised at the, uh, the number of books that are there. Let's talk about audiobooks. So yes, you can use the Books app to also listen to audiobooks. And as I was hinting before, this is a great way to start out. If you're not certain that audiobooks are right for you, right? You know, many people listen to audiobooks in their car. You know, now we're maybe not driving so much. And so, so you know, but, but there could be other opportunities for you to listen to audiobooks. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, we are going to tap on audiobooks on the lower part of the screen. And in a similar fashion, there is a menu where you can browse sections, right? So we do the same thing. And in this case, we can still look at top charts or we can look for audiobooks on various categories. But the one that I wanted you to go for is special offers. I'm going to tap on special offers. And I'm going to scroll down a little bit further. And so these are essentially audio books that are on sale. But down here, we have a section for great free listens. I'm going to tap on see all directly below that. Great free listens. I'm going to tap on see all. And here is our list of free audiobooks that you can listen to right now um, some of these are actually pretty good i'll just give you one example um, you know you know some of the ones that are free are, are some of the classics but i just happen to know because i've listened to parts of it is the time machine from hg wells right um, the narrator on that book actually happens to be Kelsey Grammer from Cheers fame, right? Uh, and and you know what a you know what a, an achieved you know actor you know doing this book, and I think you will find that you will enjoy it. You will enjoy his his performance of the Time Machine. So here's the point that I'm I'm really trying to make with these free audiobooks is. If you have never listened to an audiobook, and whether you're around the house or in your car, and you would like to give it a try, I would encourage you to jump into some of these free books and and give them a try and see if there's a you know if see if this is something that that is right for you. Another item, another source of free books that I'd like to spend a minute or two talking about is the Gutenberg Project. Now, the Gutenberg Project is an online library of free books. These books are generally classic books that are all in the public domain. Now, what that means is, you know, obviously authors write books in order to make money. And, and so those books will have copyrights. And, and when you go to the Apple Store or Amazon to buy those books, you have to pay money and the authors make a living from that process. But after so many years, a book becomes or drops into the public domain, which means that it is free, right? There is no copyright licensing for that book. And so the Gutenberg Project offers you a number of books, thousands of books, that you can actually read for free. All right, so I am going to go to, on this website, so here is the website of the Gutenberg Project, and, and you can actually see a list of um, you know, the full catalog, you can browse the catalog, you can look at different book categories, you can get books in, in, um, in German, French, Italian, and, and Portuguese. Uh, you can look at, you know, various categories. There are, I think, 60,000 free 
books that are available. All right, now what I would like to do, however, is I want to take you back to the site itself, right? And so there is a mobile Gutenberg site. And so if you press your home button or go back to your home screen and you launch up your, launch your Safari browser, right? Right here, I am looking at the, um, the popular books at the Project Gutenberg site. All right, so the point here is, is if you can see this on the screen on the left-hand side, or if I wanted to here, I could search for a book, or I can browse books. And, and this list of books is really from the catalog of all of the books in the environment. Sorry, I didn't mean to click on that. But it will then give you a list of which books are popular, right? So many of these are amongst those classic books that you were maybe assigned to read back in your school days, but maybe you never got around to it. So Alice in Wonderland, Call of the Wild, Tale of Two Cities, Treasure Island, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, Little Women, um, Walden and the Duty of Civil Disobedience by Henry David Thoreau. Um, and this list, if, if we continue to click through this list, there are literally thousands of books on this list. All right, and so now if you decide, you know, there was recently a Call of the Wild movie, wasn't there? And if you decide that you would like to read Call of the Wild, you can click on Call of the Wild and you are now given download options. Now this is important, right? This is important in that if you do want to download a free book from the Gutenberg project, what you're going to do is you are going to download one of the EPUB books. Don't download the Kindle version unless you have the Kindle app that you want to read it in. But you will want to pull down the e pub book and so you click on it now um, the website has been kind of slow um, this morning um, but here it asks do you want to download and I can say yes I would like to download this book and then after it finishes the download it'll actually pop up on the screen and ask you well where do you want to put it right and so you're going to get a screen very similar to what you now see on the left hand side where you can say I would like to open this book in the books app or here it says the iBooks app um, and, and that will actually move that book to that books app for your storage and for your reading. So the essence of Project Gutenberg is you can go to the Project Gutenberg site, and, and by the way, look to our live nine page in order to get into you know, nuggets and recipes with more detail. You can get into, um, um, you can go to the Gutenberg site, you can choose a book, you can download it, and after downloading it, you, it will go, you can copy it into your iBooks app, and from that point, you will now be able to um, you will you will now be able to read that book and the best news about that book is free. Okay. All right, one final topic here in our last few minutes. All right, so we have been looking at the books app as a tool for reading books, right? It's a pretty good app for downloading and you can find free books. We've demonstrated that. We've also demonstrated how you can do shopping. But you know, there are some hidden capabilities with the books app. One of those capabilities has to do with PDF files. All right, so now the question is, what is a PDF file? A PDF file is a common document format. It is actually invented by Adobe. PDF stands for Portable Document Format. 
there are many websites, many places where you can either download or be sent PDF files. As an example, you could go to the IRS website, irs.gov website, and when you download a tax form or you download an instruction booklet, those documents are in PDF format. So, so what do you do with them? Well, if you are downloading them to your iPad or your iPhone, one strategy is to copy them into the Books app where you can then store and read those PDF documents. Right, so let's, let's walk through a demonstration. Um, this session, right, so now I am back uh, I am back in my web browser and I am going to go to live. All right, so this is the page for this session, right? Live 9, reading books and more with the Books app. This is the and more part of the, of the conversation. And if I continue to scroll down this list, um, you know, when you come back to this uh, tomorrow, you're going to see um, access to the recorded video. If I keep scrolling down, I'm going to pass on this for a second. By the way, here are the recipes down here that we are covering, all right, that you can then tap on in order to retrieve. But the one that I wanted to look at was under download slides, right? So on this line, the Live 9 page, we have the Live 9 book app slides. And so these are the slides the handouts, if you will, that you've been looking at at the left-hand side of our screen. And so I am going to tap on this link, this Live 9 book apps. I'm going to tap on this link. And sure enough, here are the slides, the handouts that we have just been looking at. All right, and so now the question is, how do I copy these slides into the Books app. Well, the magic of this is associated with the share icon. Now, the share icon is way down at the bottom of the page. Okay? And the share icon is one of those icons that you see in a lot of your apps. And so if I tap on share, this is the place where you will see things like, you know, copy, save. Um, but the one that I wanted you to see was the command that says open in iBooks, right? There is another place where you can see this in that if I scroll in my apps pane, now there was no i or no books app there, but if I tap on more, um, here is my copy to iBooks command also. So you can actually dig for it. So now I'm just going to tap on it. And what we now have are the slides for this presentation sitting in the iBooks app. All right, so I'm going to go back. So if I tap on library, right, so here is my library. Remember the, the romance novel that I downloaded, Lucky Charm? Um, here is the slides right, that I have just installed. I can tap on those slides, and now I would be able to review all of this. Okay. So the point here is that the Books app is a very capable uh, PDF reader and, and place where you can store your PDFs. Um, you can have a similar process that you can explore if, if you get a PDF file via email, right? It's really simple. The real key is to look at the, the share icon and look for the copy to iBooks command under share. All right, so, so now you have a way that you can actually look at, um, you know, read PDF files and actually store PDF files. Uh, those PDF files can now be read offline. You don't have to have internet connection in order, in order to read those. All right, so we did it. 
there were three things that we explored today. Number one, we we uh, you know took some time to explore the books apps, the books app, and and did some reading with the books app. Two, we did some shopping, right? And we were particularly interested in shopping three books. Finally, we also highlighted the ability of the books app to help you manage your PDF documents that you either download or that you might receive via email. There's follow-up questions. Uh, you can send me an email at questions at seniortechclub.com. You can also go to the Live 9 site, and that was the page. And in fact, let me let me go to that for just a second, if you would allow me. Right. And so you can also go to the Live 9 page. This is the page that you maybe started at today. Um, later, probably by tomorrow morning, you're going to see the recorded video here rather than the access the live. Here's the download that we just completed right, for the slides. But more importantly, if you need more information about the Books app or free or affordable books for iBooks or the hidden PDF and web page capabilities of the Books app, you can look at these tools. I'm just going to click on this one. And, and so this is the document that well, I talk about the, the IRS.gov form. And I walk through the step-by-step -step process to to capture these uh, books via or or these documents, these PDF documents, to the books app. Okay, so um, back to here. Um, and finally, our next online session is going to be next Monday, and that. Next Monday is a time where we are going to schedule and uh, talk about scheduling and hosting a Zoom meeting, very similar to what we did last Monday. We're going to do an after party, all right, with this class. Uh, after party is, is is what's what one of my participants labeled this as. So after our 45-minute session is is done, we'll open up a Zoom session where we can then explore these the same topic using the actual tools themselves and if you want to keep track of any of our future sessions you can go to links.seniortechclub.com slash live and and you will see those the, the upcoming sessions highlighted there so we're done for the day thanks so much for joining us uh, please stay well stay at home wash your hands keep learning keep exploring new stuff and we hope to see you back here next Monday again.